and as adaptive as the day is long. And he says that we who doubt it are as fundamentalists as people who blow up their fellow citizens on the, on the London Underground. It's, it's unconscionable. Thus, I don't really mind being accused of ridiculing or treating with contempt people like that. I just frankly have no choice. I, 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 I have the faculty of humor, and some of it has an edge to it. I'm not going to repress that uh, for the sake of uh, politeness of people. Would, would you think that it would be good to make a distinction between the professionals and the amateurs? I share your uh, impatience with the officials of the churches, the, the pr people who this is their professional life, mm. it seems to me they know better. Right. The congregations don't know better because the, it's maintained that they should not know better. The con I, I do get very anxious about ridiculing the beliefs of the flock because of the way in which they have ceded to their leaders uh, they've, they've delegated authority to their leaders, and they, they presume their leaders are going to do it right. So I think in this, uh, uh, you know, who takes, the, who stands up and says the buck stops here? Right. Well, it seems to me it's, it's, it's the preachers themselves, it's the priests, it's the bishops, and, and we really should hold their feet to the fire. For instance, let, uh, just take, take the issue of creationism. If somebody in a fundamentalist church thinks that creationism is, makes sense because their pastor told them. Well, I can, I can understand that and excuse that. We all, we all get a lot of what we take to be true from people that we respect and whom we view as authorities. We don't check everything. But where did the pastor get this idea? And I don't care where he is. He's, he or she is responsible because their, their job is to know what they're talking about in a way that the uh, congregation is. We have to be a little bit careful not to sound condescending when we say that. And, and in a way, it's reflecting the condescension yep. of the, of the mm. preacher. Yes, because mm. I'll, I'll, mm. I'll take things that you and Richard say on the human and natural sciences, not without wanting to check, but I'm often unable to, but knowing that you are the sort of gentleman who would have checked. If you say, the bishop told me it, so I believe it, you make a fool of yourself, it seems to me, yeah. and one is entitled to say so just as one is entitled when dealing with an ordinary racist to say that his opinions are revolting. Uh, right. he, may be, he may know no better, but that's not going to save him from my condemnation. And nor should it. And I, I think exactly it's condescending not, not to confront yeah. people, as it were, one by one, or en masse. So public, is public opinion is, well, is often wrong. Mob opinion is almost always wrong. Well, let's Religious, opinion is wrong. Religious opinion is wrong by definition. We can't, we can't avoid this I wanted to intrude the name H.L. Mencken at this point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now a very unjustly celebrated American writer, um, not particularly to my taste, much too much of a Nietzschean, mm -hmm. and, and what really was once meant by social Darwinists right. at one stage. But he, why did he win the tremendous respect of so many people in this country in the 20s and 30s? Because he said, the people who believe what the Methodists tell them and what William Jennings Bryan tells them are fools. They're not being fooled. They are fools. They should shame they, on they, them they, for they, believing these. Yes, yeah. it's un, yeah. they, they make themselves undignified and ignorant, and no mincing of words here, and a great admixture of wit and evidence and reasoning. Mm -hmm. It absolutely works. The most successful mm -hmm. anti-religious polemic that's probably ever been in the modern world, I in the 20th I, century anyway. I think we just touched upon an issue that we should really um, highlight: this whole yeah. notion of authority, because yeah. religious people often argue that. Science is just a, a tissue of, of uh, uncashed checks. You know, we're, we're all yeah, yeah. relying on authority. How do you know that, that uh, the cosmological constant is whatever it is? You know, so how, I think you two are, are well placed to do this. Differentiate the kind of faith placing in authority that we practice without fear in science and, and rationality generally and the kind of faith placing in the, the preacher or the theologian that we, we criticize. Well, what we actually do when, when we who are not physicists take on trust what physicists say is we, uh, we have some evidence to suggest that physicists have looked into the matter, that they've done experiments, that they've peer-reviewed mm. their, their, their papers, um, that they've criticized each other, that they've been subjected to 
massive criticism from their peers in seminars and in, in lectures and things. There's, and they've come through. And, with and, and, and remember the structure that's there too. Mm. It's not just that there's peer review, but it's very important that it's competitive. For instance, when uh, uh, Fermat's last theorem was proved by right. Andrew uh, Wiles, Wiles. Andrew yeah. Wiles um, the reason that those of us who, <laughs> forget it, I'm never going to understand that proof, mm. uh, but the reason that we can be confident that it really is a proof is that nobody wanted e him to get every there first. other yeah. <laughs> mathematician who was competent <laughs> in the world <laughs> was, was very well motivated to study to that. Yeah. And, and, and believe me, if they, if they begrudge him that this is a proof, it's a proof. Yeah. Yeah. And there's nothing like that in nothing like that. No, because when the antithesis of no, 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 religious, no religious person has ever been able to say, say what Einstein said. If, if, yeah. if I'm right, the following solar event will occur off the west coast of Africa in I forget how many mm. years and months right. from now, and it, and it did within a very tiny degree of variation. There's never been a prophecy that's been vindicated yeah. like, like yeah. that, or, or anyone willing yep. to um, place their reputation yep. and their, as it were, their life on the idea that it would be. I, I was once asked uh, at, at a public meeting, don't you think that the mysteriousness of quantum theory is just the same as the mysteriousness of the mm. trinity or the transubstantiation? Yes. And the answer, of course, is, is, can be answered in two quotes from Richard Feynman. One Richard Feynman said, uh, if you think you understand quantum theory, you don't understand quantum theory. He was admitting that it's highly mysterious. Mm. But the other thing is that the, the predictions of quantum theory experimentally are verified to the equivalent of predicting the width of North America to the width of one human hair. Right. And so <laughs> quantum theory is massively yeah. supported yeah. by yeah. accurate predictions, even if you don't understand the mystery of, of, of the Copenhagen interpretation, whatever it is. Right. Whereas the mystery of the Trinity doesn't even try to make a prediction, let alone an accurate one. You know, I don't like... It doesn't, isn't a mystery either. I don't, I don't like the use of the word mystery here. Yes. I think, I think uh, this has been, there's been a lot of consciousness raising in philosophy about this term, mm -hmm. where we have so-called mysterians, the new mysterians. These are people who like the term mystery. Uh, Noam Chomsky is famously uh, quoted to say, there's, there's two kinds of questions. There's puzzles and mysteries. Puzzles are soluble. Mysteries aren't. Mm. And first of all, I... I just don't buy that, but I buy, the, I buy the distinction and say there's nothing about mystery in science. There's, there's puzzles, there's deep puzzles, there's things we don't know, there's things we'll never know, but they aren't systematically incomprehensible to human beings. The, the, the glorification of the idea that these things are, are systematically incomprehensible is, I think, uh, has, has no place in, in science. Which is why I think we should be quite uh, happy to revive traditional terms in our discourse, such as obscurantism and obfuscation, mm. is what they really are. And, and to point out that these things can make intelligent people uh, act stupidly. Uh, John Cornwell, who's just written another, okay. another attack on yourself, Richard, and who is an old friend of mine, a very brilliant guy, wrote one of the best studies of the Catholic Church and fascism that has been published. Mm -hmm. He's, in his review of you, he says, Mr. Daw Professor Dawkins should just look at the shelves of books there are on the Trinity. <laughs> the library is full mm -hmm. of attempts to solve this problem mm -hmm. before he's so... Mm -hmm. But none of the books in those religious libraries solve it either. Yep. Yeah. It, the whole point is that it remains insoluble and is used to keep people feeling baffled and inferior. Yeah. But I want to come back to the thing about mystery in, in, in physics, because I isn't it possible that our evolved brains, because we, we evolved in what I call middle world, where, where um, we, we never have to cope with the, either the very small or the cosmologically very large, mm. we may never actually have an intuitive feel for what's going on in quantum mechanics, but yep. we can still test its predictions. Yep. We can still actually yep. do the mathematics. and do the physics to actually test the predictions, because anybody can read the dials on a... Right. I think, I think what, what we can see is that um, what scientists have constructed over the, over the centuries is a series of tools, mind tools, thinking tools, 
mathematical tools and so forth, which enable us to some degree to overcome the limitations of our evolved brains, our, our uh, uh, Stone Age, if you like, brains.